The proper way to fulfill the mitzvah of Shiviti is to remain aware of the six mitzvot of the Torah that must constantly be fulfilled every hour, every day, as long as a person lives. The Sefer HaChinuch gives a list of the six constant mitzvot. 1. To believe that Hashem exists. 2. To believe that there is no other God besides Him. 3. To believe that God is one. 4. To love God. 5. To fear God. and 6. To avoid following the urge of one's heart or eyes. The reward for fulfilling these mitzvot is immeasurable. So we're going to go through each one and try to get a better understanding of what they all mean. The Torah lists 613 mitzvot, 613 different ways to develop spirituality and connection to Hashem. Most of these mitzvot are limited by time, person, or opportunity. For example, eating matzah only applies on Pesach. Brit milah, circumcision, only applies to a baby boy. And so on for almost all the rest of the mitzvot. However, these six mitzvot are six special mitzvot that we observe at all times under all circumstances. Rather than requiring the performance of a certain action, these mitzvot are a state of being, a reality of living with God's existence. The degree to which a person fulfills these mitzvot actually determines the closeness of the relationship that he has with Hashem. So the first one is to know that there is a God. The first of the Ten Commandments declares in Exodus 22, I am Hashem your God who took you out of the land of Egypt. This is the mitzvah to know that there is a God. The Rambam states in Yisodei Torah 1.6 that awareness of God is the foundation of Judaism. The primary logic of this commandment seems a little difficult to understand. Someone who already observes God's commandments obviously believes in his existence. So what need is there for a command to do so? And if someone doesn't know that God exists, he probably won't accept such a commandment in the first place. So exactly who is this mitzvah for? The Torah is telling us that our belief in Hashem shouldn't be based on faith alone, but also on investigation and knowledge. In order to strengthen our faith, we have to research, study, and analyze philosophical evidence of God as a creator, sustainer, and supervisor of the universe. So beyond the basic knowledge and understanding that God is in charge of everything, we have to also know this in our heart. As the verse says in Devalim 4.39, you shall know this day and understand it in your heart that Hashem is God. Chovot Alevavot 4.2 tells us that one way to develop trust in Hashem is to appreciate how much love He has for us. The closest thing we can compare this to is the love a parent has for their child. Hashem has a love for us that exceeds all the love in this world. A child would jump off a ledge into his father's arms with complete confidence that his father will catch him. That is the level of trust and awareness we should have in Hashem. You see, trust in Hashem means to understand that Hashem knows what's good for us. And everything that happens to us is for the best. Just by saying how much He's already done for us. The fact that we wake up every morning after being in a state of 160th of death. We have food to eat every day. Our bodies are able to function properly. As it says in Tehidim 145.16, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. On a national level as well. We should appreciate how Hashem has made the Jews an eternal nation, surviving holocausts, slavery, and many attempts from permanent extinction, God forbid. When someone gives you something, it makes it easy to want to give something back. In this case, it's Hashem's love for the Jewish people by giving us survival so we can keep His Torah and live by it, and to love God through Torah study. The Rambam says, The Torah is Hashem's instructions for humanity, the ultimate treasury for wisdom. The more one studies Torah and observes the mitzvot, the more one appreciates the perfection, consistency, and harmony of God's system that He created. We move on to the second on the list, not to believe in other gods. The second of the six mitzvot, which is also the second of the Ten Commandments, is found in Exodus 23, which instructs not to believe in any other gods. The Rambam includes giving credit or power to anything other than Hashem. This prohibition is obviously referring to the worship of idols. Masechet Avodah Zarah tells us that accepting any being as a mediator between God and man is a denial of the very essence of Judaism. There should not be a strange God inside of you. But what does that mean? 
What type of strange god is inside of a human being? The Talmud in Shabbat 105b says that this strange god is the Yetzara, the evil inclination, to be distracted from God. Distractions such as believing in money, fame, a fast computer, a new iPhone, a new house, a new car, that these things are the source of happiness and success in life. This denies God as the only power in the universe and is in fact a form of idolatry. In addition, another violation of this mitzvah is to ignore God's role in our accomplishments and instead take the credit for ourselves, as if we made whatever it is happen. As the verse says in Deuteronomy, Perhaps you will eat and become satisfied. You will become very rich, and you will have plenty of everything. And then you might become haughty, and you will forget Hashem your God. And you will say, My power, the strength of my hand, made me all this wealth. Of course, everything is provided by God. We just have to invest a little bit of effort in understanding this. The verse says, Remember Hashem, your God, because He gives you the power to accomplish anything and everything. The question is, though, how much of an effort should we make versus relying on Hashem to make it happen? This all depends on each person's level of trust in Hashem. The third of the six, God is one. Deuteronomy 6.4, Shema Yisrael, the Jewish declaration of God's unity. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Hear, O Israel, Hashem is our God, Hashem is one. This verse is found inside the Tfilin, the Mezuzah, and is recited twice each day, morning and evening. Starting with Avraham Avinu, one of the greatest contributions that Jews gave the world is the knowledge of one God, monotheism. The Rambam says that the difference between one God and many is not simply a matter of quantity. One God implies one absolute truth and one system of justice and conduct. God is one means that he is unchanging. He created time and is not subject to it. The Rambam also writes that the greatest wisdom a human being can attain is to comprehend the oneness of God. Included in this is the mitzvah to reject any notion of multiples or parts of Hashem. He says in Morei Nebuchim 150 that the concept of Trinity, a group of three people or things, which is what the Christians believe, is complete opposite to Judaism. But what about all the evil that's in the world? Evil is not an independent force. All challenges are designed only to bring out the best in us. Something bad is a chance to make the right choice and bring us closer to Hashem. And Hashem never gives us a challenge which is too difficult for us to overcome. The fourth of the six, to love God. The Torah says in Deuteronomy 6.5, You shall love Hashem your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your possessions. The Rambam writes, A person can only love according to the degree that he knows the object of his love. If he knows a little, he can love a little. And if he knows a lot, he can love a lot. Essentially, the mitzvah to love God is easy, since everything about God is good. As it says in Tehillim 145.17, Hashem is righteous in all His ways and faithful in all He does. The challenge here is developing the ways by which to know Him. One way of becoming more in touch with the Shem is the study of nature. When one ponders God's great and wonderful acts of creation and sees in them a genius that has no comparison, then automatically a person will love, praise, glorify, and deeply desire to know the greatness of God. Meshit Chochmah says that when a person considers all the good that Hashem does for him, he will naturally be overcome with feelings of love. God created the universe only for our benefit. He gives you the strength and ability to achieve whatever life throws at you. He helps you get a job, find a spouse, build a home, keeps you breathing and gives you life. The sages instituted blessings to help facilitate this. We praise Hashem when eating, when doing mitzvot, and when experiencing certain events in our lifetime. Loving Hashem is a constant mitzvah, because one should be constantly preoccupied with the pursuit of closeness to Him. The Rambam in Teshuvah 10.3 compares this to the intense wanting that a man feels for a woman. We have to be focused on the craving for Hashem that leaves no room for anything else. Masechet Brachot 61b says, We have to be willing to sacrifice anything for Hashem. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't love our family and nice things. We need to take those extras in life and use them to show the appreciation that we have for Hashem. 5. 
to fear God. The Torah tells us to constantly be in fear of Hashem. Imagine, there are hidden cameras watching your every progress throughout life. You will be accountable for every action and choice. As we've mentioned in previous videos, are we maximizing life at every opportunity? Or are we wasting it? With Hashem, everything is recorded. And sooner or later, we'll have to answer for all our actions. Fear is often misunderstood to be a negative emotion. But fear of reality, the possibility of a missed opportunity, is rather a motivation to help get us where we want to be. This fear should motivate us to get the job done. Kiddushin 39b says, When a person's time comes, judgment and accounting is one of the first things we encounter. Every decision and every thought, all the good deeds and the embarrassing things, all the things that we did in private, are all replayed before us. Masechet Pesachim 50a says, That's why the next world is called Olam Emet, the world of truth, because there we clearly see everything, our strengths and our weaknesses, and the true purpose of life. Keeping this concept in mind will help us improve greatly. Next, number six, to avoid following the urge of one's heart and eyes. The world is filled with distractions. TV, radio, immodest billboards, phones, computers, internet, material things, all are expertly designed to tap into our subconscious. But the Torah says in Numbers 15.39, don't be misled by your hearts and eyes. The Jewish ideology is to follow common sense, not urge or impulse. Sefer Chinuch says that it's because these material things are so persuasive that we have a constant challenge to strengthen ourselves and not be led astray. The sages teach in Yomad 29a that lustful thoughts are worse than a lustful act. Because when someone commits a lustful act, he has lowered himself to the animalistic level and has rebelled against the Shem's commandments. But when it comes to our thoughts, this has a far long-lasting effect. Sometimes thoughts and past memories can last for years when a single act is only performed a single time. This, however, is not an excuse to do one over the other. Both will have very severe consequences. Rambam Avodazara 2.3 Included in this mitzvah is a requirement to avoid all thoughts that may distance a person from Hashem, staying away from unnecessary material things and social situations that can harm our spirituality. The Chafetz Chaim warns that if a person fails to observe the Torah's rules about what our eyes see, he can be assured that he will be stricken with blindness in the world to come. He won't be able to see the Shekhinah, which is God's supernal light. Masechet Sanhedrin 107b says, The God of Israel hates immoral activity. So it's obvious and clear from this statement alone that anyone who goes to the beach or a place that has a modesty puts himself in a category of a wicked person. And this issue isn't just pertaining to men alone. Rav Chaim Palachi ruled that women must also avoid going to places like the beach or pools. He explains that many, many problems result from such behavior. A useful tool to help us counter the urge for these types of situations. Every decision a person is faced with in life, a person has to ask themselves, what does my soul want versus what my body wants? When engaging in any physical activity, eating, working, exercising, ask yourself, why am I doing this? What's the goal here? Will it bring me closer to Hashem or further away? In Jewish thought, human beings have two hearts. Our divine soul, the Yetzel Tov, the good inclination, that only wants to do all the right things, to love one another, to seek justice, be generous, be responsible, honorable. It wants to grow, achieve, and fulfill its full potential before returning to its creator. Ultimately, it seeks to emulate and connect with its infinite eternal source, Hashem Himself. Yet, we also have a body, an animalistic side, that we refer to as the Yetzirah, the evil incarnation. It seeks satisfaction for the moment, to escape into the world of comfort. Money buys happiness and material things. The body wants to eat, sleep, and lust, and in the end, it's headed for the grave. We should keep in mind not to indulge in physical pleasure for its own sake. It has to be controlled for the right reasons at the right times. Become a master over materialism and not vice versa. The key is to avoid temptations. In this way, 
the physical pleasure becomes a stepping stone to higher pleasure and will bring us closer to Hashem. The following story illustrates this concept. There was once a carpenter. He had a hobby and a love for carpentry. He one day decides to build himself a beautiful dresser. He gathered the finest wooden tools he could find, and he set out to start building. After lots of hard work, dedication, blood, sweat, tears, and the love that he put into this dresser, after months he finally finished. He steps back and gazes at his handcrafted masterpiece and was happy and satisfied. As life went on, the carpenter gets into some financial issues and was forced to sell his house, his dresser included. Fighting and tried to figure out ways to scrap money from different places to try and salvage his belongings, he was forced to give it all up. Some years later, he was able to get himself back on his feet. Driving home one day, he sees a garage sale. He stops right in front. Something catches his eye. It looks familiar, but not the same, he says to himself. He parks his car, gets out, and walks closer to this item that he sees. After close inspection, to his surprise, it was his dresser. That same dresser that he built years ago. But as he looks closer and inspects it further, he sees a chip here and a dent there, a broken handle, discoloration, stains, a crack on the side. It's pretty much destroyed from all the wear and tear and carelessness from all the usage it's gone through. The man simply breaks down and cries. This is how we look like to Hashem the day we get reunited with Him. I created you perfect, without any blemishes, without any stains. Now I see nothing but imperfections. My masterpiece is ruined, stained from sin. It's no longer perfect. Maybe this story can be a little motivation to help us from damaging and staining our souls. Maybe this will help us return the same way or close enough to how Hashem created us. These six mitzvot can be fulfilled in our thoughts alone, regardless of a person's physical abilities. All Jews can use these mitzvot to get to know, love, and respect our Creator, as well as to become better people.